anyway, um, I'm going to go ahead and jump back here over to uh, Aaron's question. Um, so what we were talking about here is uh, the idea of, uh, I think he said Xing out two man and three mans on chalky teams. Um, this is an interesting point. I, I don't think, and in general, uh, I am not likely to go through and do this uh, in, intentionally. Um, but I think there is a game theory argument uh, to be made that the best way to use the chalky stacks, if you are going to use them, is in the biggest stacks you can make possible. Uh, and the reason why is a uh, element of correlation, right? Um, so if we are playing, for example, I think it's very likely that Houston is going to be the chalky uh, stack tonight, right? Um, and if we are using maybe a lineup that has someone uh, like one of these guys hitting right in the middle of the order, like Michael Brantley or something like that, right? Uh, and you have a one-off of that player, or maybe you have a small single Houston stack, right? So we have a three stack here of Houston uh, where we've used Alvarez, Brantley, and Gurriel, right? Um more, it, it is better demonstrated thinking about it as a one-off. But if uh, Brantley hits a home run, right, or even just gets on base, right, uh, while that is good for your lineup, by, in effect, giving every other hitter in the batting order one-ninth of an additional at-bat uh, because he didn't get out, other lineups that stacked that team more aggressively um, – stand to gain more from the impacts of correlation than you do, even though you have rostered that player, right? And there are certainly game outcomes where a single player on a popular team goes off um, or uh, a minor stack or two or three players on a uh, popular team all have, you hit the you hit the total nuts with Houston and it's maybe they have a relatively median outcome. They score six runs and Gurriel, Alvarez, and Brantley all homer, right? Like this this is probably still a, a profitable lineup. Um it's a, it shows up with a high saber score here. It's a highly ranked lineup. I, I don't think this needs to be intentionally X'd out, but it is an interesting uh component when you're really diving into the the individual lineups here that I think using it again i think i'll just just reiterate what i said before that the best way to play the chalk i think if you are going to play it especially with stacks is to max out uh the largest stack possible because you take into account that correlative effect um i am a little bit hesitant instead uh to use single game or single players or uh, minor one-off stacks um, of those players, because I don't want to enable the ceiling outcome of the players that stack those teams more aggressively than I did. Um, so uh, it is definitely a very interesting thing to think about. I think, like, honestly, tonight is a pretty decent example of a slate. It will be important to keep an eye on, I think, what the field is looking at throughout the day um, and how much ownership is apparently going to condense. You know, we always talk about this... Uh, fantasy labs dashboard here that I think is really useful for just quickly visualizing um, at least what the field perceives about the hitting spots that day. But yeah, I checked this earlier, right? Uh, the Astros are, are kind of running away here um, with their implied total, at least at this point in the early afternoon. So something important to continue to keep an eye on, right? If the field ends up ultimately believing that the Astros are by far and away the best hitting spot on the night, and that team is getting really chalky on just a six game slate, that's where these impacts start to come in. This is a slate where I might consider um, basically kind of having that approach with a team like Houston. Um, I don't know how much Houston I would be likely to get period in a slate like this with how the day is developing. But if I were to roster them, I would probably want to maximize that correlative effect. Um, so yeah, uh, Aaron said, yeah, that's how I think about it. Um, yeah, definitely kind of a more like nuanced think way of thinking about the correlation and game theory components there, but something something to note. Um, so.